Sarah Jacobson, Marketing Artfully. So today we're going to talk about starting an Etsy store and figuring out what people want to buy. So when you make things, they actually want to buy them for crochet, knitting, and needlework. Those are three kinds of items that it seems like Etsy um, considers handmade that are seem to be relatively highly time intensive. And so you don't want to be making a whole bunch of stuff that nobody wants to buy, right? So we're going to figure out how to uh, game the system a little bit and make sure that your products are ones that people are interested in. So the first thing we want to do anytime we're starting a new product is we want to go to Etsy and we want to see what they say. So we're going to do crochet. So crochet patterns, crochet blanket. So blanket, hat, scarf, baby blanket, doll, baby bassinet bag, animals. So you would pick one of those that you like. And it's funny because I was doing this research a little bit yesterday. The reason I'm making this video is for my friend Carrie who loves to crochet and we want to make sure that she's making things that people want to buy. So let's look at crochet animals and see what these kinds of things are. And these are all really cute crochet animals. Um, so if you're interested in knitting, then this would be a really good way to do it. And another thing that you could do, oh my God, it's a tiny giraffe. Um, another thing that you could do is if you like making patterns that people want to purchase, you could also sell the patterns. But we're doing the actual physical crafts today when we're talking about things because Carrie enjoys knitting and crocheting or whatever it is. And so we want to make sure we have it. So what happens once you get to animals is then you do crochet unicorn, octopus, bunny, elephants. But let's go back and we're going to do crochet. Okay. And let's say bags, right? Now the thing is when you're trying to go into Etsy and figure out what to make, a lot of times you can go to these high levels. So like I sell vintage, so I could go to vintage and then they're gonna give you a whole bunch of categories, home and living, jewelry, art and collectibles. Now with crochet, needlework and knitting, they're not doing that because what they do is they go to jewelry and accessories and then they're actually categorizing the thing that you make, right? That That's the thing that they want to do. So, um, I would assume that crocheting those animals takes a little bit of time. That's another consideration when you're thinking about what you want to do. Now, we can go through and find all kinds of cool things here on Etsy that could be a good idea, but we don't really know how many of them are selling, right? So we want to know that we're going to spend our time making something that people want to buy. And to do that, you're going to go to this site called Craft Count. Craft Count. I'll put a link to that in the in the blog post or the video. And we're going to go to Top Sellers by Category. And the reason I picked those three, crochet, needlework, and knitting, is because in Handmade, those are major categories that they have categorized, right? So we can find crochet. So we're going to open that link. I right-clicked to open it. We're going to go to knitting. There's knitting. And then needle crafts. Okay. And the cool thing about this is what they're doing is they're doing daily counts of who has the most sales. So let's go ahead and move crochet down here at the end. And this lady has the most crochet sales. She's in the Czech Republic. And she's selling animals. Now, if you're in the United States, you have a, um, a bonus over her because you're going to be able to ship more quickly. But she has developed some really cute things that seem to be very popular. Now, what we want to do is we want to find somebody with, it's called their sales open. She has closed off her sales, so we can't see what's there. But you know what we can see is her reviews. And that, of course, is a much smaller number. It could, it's not, you know, perfect. But this is the crochet pattern, crochet pattern. Um, she loves them all, crochet pattern. So these are, let's check, these may all be crochet patterns. 
they're all patterned. So this would not be a good idea for um, Carrie to like mimic if she wants to make real things, but you could find out which crochet patterns they like the most and this will give you an idea. So say you were going to be doing um, like a like an ornament, you would know that, that they probably sell pretty well. Say you were going to do little bags or purses, then you could see what kinds of things they're doing. You want to take note of things like colors. So it looks like there's a lot of really hot pink. There's a really lot of bright colors. But let's go back. We want to find somebody who really does make crochet. And because I did this yesterday, I know that we have to go down a little bit before we get to anybody. So this is Lockets and Bangles. She must just have a few crochet things. Um, this is Personalized Newborns. We can't get into here, but you could start looking at, do you want to make newborn hats? And that thing where you get more specific, okay, I make hats. I make hats for everybody. Oh no, now I make hats for newborns and a very specific kind of hat. That will help you sell more because when you're starting, it feels like if you do everything, and I talk to so many Etsy sellers and Carrie's like this, she can make coffee cozies and she can make hats and she can make bags and she can make um, scrubbies, which I think is what we're going to wind up looking at. Uh, she can make, you know, blankets. She can do all these things. And what happens is that you become not a shop that anybody can come by at, but it's kind of this weird, you know, oh, I don't know what this lady's doing. At least if it's, this is patterns. Um, at least if, if you know what you're doing. Think about it. When you walk into a store, when you walk into anthropology, if you're buying for your teen girls, and you see that it's all teen clothing over here and all boys clothing over there, or you walk into Bed Bath & Beyond, you know that you're going to get candles, you're going to get like a bunch of different scents, but all the same kinds of things, right? But then you walk into a flea market and you're like overwhelmed, you're looking around, there's so many things you could buy and you're not as likely to purchase any one thing because there's such a difference in what's going on there. So that's just something to think about. Okay, so this is patterns. They're all patterns there. So let's keep going. And these are knit pieces. So she is actually set, doing these, making pom-poms, making Christmas no. Oh, that's a pattern. No, that's a pattern and the actual gnome. Okay, let's see if she, oh, she has her sales open. So we can see what she's selling. So she sold a pattern. She sold actual pom-poms. She sold pom-poms. Ooh, pom-poms seem to be a good thing that you could think of. This is a pattern. This is a cute wine battle hat. That's adorable. Um, so hers is mostly patterns, to be honest. Pattern door hanging, pattern, pattern. She does make some things, so that's something to think about. Let's see what this is. Oh, it's my phone. It's making that little crackly noise. Excuse me for one minute. Okay, now we have, how cute are you, baby booties and little fingerless mittens, fingerless gloves for babies. This is adorable. And when you see this, you know they're all um, like pregnancy announcements, things like that. Um, those are all very cute. We can't see her sales. So you're just going to go through this and try to find the ones that do have them open. Now see this store. This is the thing. So they have jewelry. Oh, it's crochet style jewelry. So that's why that's coming up as crochet. Um, let's see. I was trying to think if I could find. Okay, so these are hats and dresses. Oh my goodness, that's beautiful. Um, and wings, crochet wings. Oh, that's to buy the cover photo. So you can have a really broad range of things and know, let's see if her things are open. Where's her shop? Oh, I don't know how to get to her shop. Visit your shop. Okay, so are hers open? Hers are open. I have all mine open, people. Uh, first off, I'm very proud of my sales, 
And second off, I, um, oh, those are cute. Cat butt coasters. Those are adorable. And then she has baby girl Ugg inspired. And then she has shampoo bars and crochet giraffes and things like that. So it's a little bit more mishmashy store. You can kind of start to get a feeling for how it feels from the end user going, oh, is she selling bath bombs or is she selling baby shoes or is she selling coasters? So you want to try to avoid confusing people. So that's uh, crochet. So we're going to close out crochet. We're going to go look at, this is... Well, let's see. Embroidery. Needlework. So this is needlework. So this is embroidery. And I'm assuming this is the embroidery machines. And so let's see if all of these are embroidered products. Okay, so she has applique machine embroidery, instant download. So these are all patterns for these. So you would be selling the pattern for that product. Um, and so one of the reasons why this may be that the sites that are at the very top have uh, more patterns than anything is because of how time arduous it is to make these things. Okay, so these are applique designs, so you can physically buy these applique designs. They're $3, and then she has hers open. Karen does. Yay, Karen. And so this is a monogram. Uh, embroidered uh, stitch machine. Let's see what this means. Okay. Embroidery design. So she's selling designs. So she made little designs for embroidery and she's selling those. And this is, and she's being um, machine embroidery design mini. So this is saying you buy the machine, the different file resolutions. So those are patterns. And what you're going to want to do for each of these categories, we'll go look at knitting real quick because this is fun, right? You want to look at these different um, things and see. Now, let's go further down. So this is going to be our, I think this is knitting. This is knitting. Okay. So this lady has 1,439 sales, Tortilla Girl. And you can see it's knitting patterns, PDF patterns. So all of hers, all, all of hers patterns, all of hers are patterns. And, and this is funny, she only has eight patterns and she's one of the top sellers. So she has 1439 sales. So that's very good, good for her. Um, but we wanna find somebody who's actually Knitting. Ooh, chunky blankets. Chunky blanket. Chunky knit blanket from Premium Murano Wool. Okay, let's see where they are because that seems like... So, wool art, contact... Let's see where she's at. Trying to figure out where she is. Because that seems like a giant merino wool chubby knit blanket. Um, that seems very low price. Oh, here we go. Latvia. Okay, so she's shipping it from overseas. And so the cost of the blanket is lower because the shipping cost would be higher. Now she could build that into her price with free shipping. But... You know, when you're doing this, you do want to look at those different things. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at, next, I found out that crochet scrubbies yesterday when I was messing around, uh, scrubbies are a thing. So this is a thing, and I think it's something that Carrie could do, and it's something that's sold a lot. We found a lady, and if you went through all those, we found a lady who had different things. So, number one, you can try to compete on price. So, these are 250 crochet nylon tool scrubbies. So, these are going to be, somebody just 
sitting there with their nylon wool, doing them, blah, blah, blah. You could do it to make your sales higher. You could do it by putting three of them together. And a lot of times people would rather buy three of them together because there's still a shipping cost to it. So you want to um, definitely find out what your customers are going to like. So Nylon Dish Scrubbies, let's see if Not Crafty Jane has her sales open. She does. Okay, so she sold 336 of these Nylon Dish Scrubbies. This woman is cranking out three Nylon Dish Scrubbies at a time. God bless her. Good job. Okay, Jane. Um, so you could try to compete head-on-head -head with Jane, who is selling three for $2, and that may be hard to do. What you might want to do is figure out something for your own self. So like these ones are different colors. They're, they're choose three for $10. And let me see, open link in new tab, let's see. So she's getting $3 more. It may be easier to make these, it may be harder to make these. Um, that's all gonna be taken into consideration, but let's see what she sold. She has sold crocheted pot holders. Those are really cute. And this is really fun. So this is a handmade camper. So now you're selling these pot holders to go into campers, right? Like it's for a very specific niche audience. You're not going to sell as many as if you made unicorns or you made um, llamas last year. I never understood the llamas. But you could absolutely sell a bunch of them to people who have campers because that's adorable. Okay, Cardinal Scrubbies, so she has a different shape. Christmas Scrubbies, Sunflowers, so you could do different shaped Scrubbies. That's very fun. All right, you could do different shapes this way. There's, um, I have a Scrubby issue, and I've been looking at these, so um, let's see, Scrubbies. that aren't crocheted, right? So these are, let's see, uh, Echo Friendly Cleaning. Let's see if we can find it. These guys, kitchen sponges. Okay, so I love kitchen sponges. These are knitted, so for our knitting ladies, these are very cool. And so I have been stocking these. And so this one, a lot of times these are made in the United Kingdom and things like that. You're going to be competing on, I think it's this one, Unsponge. Now, you want to make sure you're not competing with anybody's copyright. Unsponge sounds like a copyright, so you want to make sure to do that. I have looked at these guys, and these are um, have a mesh on them, and they are... $3 each. So this is a way you can do research to find things. You also want to look at colors. What, oh, echo friendly. So you want to know colors that people want and then buying triggers. So for me, echo friendly is a buying trigger. Things that I buy include um, Paper towels that, that are made out of cloth that you snap together and you put on the roll. Eco-friendly scrubbies, eco-friendly sponges, eco-friendly um, anything for the kitchen. So if you enjoy making a wide range of things, you could also target a type of person that, so let's, if we go here and we have eco-friendly reusable sponges, and those seem really cute. Okay, she has her handmade goodies. So she has a crochet bag and these large scrubbies. So she's large dish scrubbies, 10. Let's see. She's had 78 sales. She should take everything else out of her store and sell scrubbies, right? Like she should have different colored scrubbies. She should have different style scrubbies. She should have like, so, so what you could do is you have this as your primary one on one, you have this as your primary image on one, you have this as your primary image on one. See how her store looks very similar and she only has nine items? She could have, you know, 20 items. 
She could have 30 items of scrubbies because you never know which color of scrubby somebody's going to catch their eye. You never know. Somebody might like flat scrubbies. Somebody may like, you know, fluffy scrubbies. I'm, you know, drawn more to this pile of scrubbies than I am to this pile of scrubbies. Um, so let's see what her reviews say. Pictures don't do these justice. Amazing. They love them. Recommend this seller. Shipped and received fast. Echo friendly, really reusable. She has tons of great reviews. Um, she's doing wonderful. So that's how you can do some product research and make sure that what you're making in any of those um, areas are going to be something that people want to buy. Hopefully that helps. Kara Jacobson, Marketing Artfully.